Okay, guys, so I'm, I'm Manu Lakshman. I have my the title of my project is Fan Beam Reconstruction for Limited Views and Sparse Data. So I've been working on uh, trying, to, trying to reconstruct images from sinograms that are incomplete. Uh, incomplete in terms of limited angles, and also in, in, uh, in the case of uh, complete sinograms where the data sampling has been sparse. And this is this is very this will be very useful because if you can if you can limit the angles of uh, projection data that you need in fan beam CT you can limit you can uh, you decrease the exposure radiation exposure to the patients significantly and particularly in the case of uh, nuclear medicine the you know the projection the projection X-ray projection is a random process because uh, you're depending on nuclear decay and so. In order to fill the sinogram space, you have to wait a very long time. So, in the case of nuclear medicine, you ha you, you often have a, a very sparse sinograms. Uh, so first, let me let me remind you of the uh, CT geometry. So we have uh, in the case of a fan beam, we have a point source, and we take projections at different angles of this point source, and the the projection angle. Uh, Throughout my talk, I've used beta for the projection angle, and uh, the the object is similar to the origin. And in some cases, the the detector we, we use a flat detector. And I also want to point out that in some cases the, the detector is curved. And so, in the case of uh, a curved detector, the rays for which you have data are at equal angles. But in the case of having a flat detector. Yeah, that's 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 not the case. The the rays are at different angles, but the data is equally spaced. So here is a here is an example of a sinogram. Uh, this is a complete sinogram. Here on the vertical axis is the is the detector position. On the horizontal axis is the source angle, and the this uh, the intensity here is is the measured measured data for each uh, each detector position for for each uh, source angle. But what if we have a case where uh, we don't have we don't we, we didn't we decided not to rotate the gantry completely 360 degrees? See, in this case, uh, the uh, horizontal axis goes from zero to 360. But we, in this case, uh, in this particular figure, we've rotated the gantry just from we've covered projection angles from zero to 210. So, can we still reconstruct the image in this case? Uh, let me first uh, remind you that you may remember in in the parallel projection case, there's a very simple relationship between uh, data taken at projection angles that are 180 degrees apart. In the case of parallel beam projection, if you take projections at 180 degrees apart, the data you get is just mirror images of each other. And so in the case of parallel projection, we know it's very simple. You just need data from zero to 180 degrees. But in the case here, in the case of fan beam, the fan beam geometry, the relationship uh, is a little more complicated. So, in order for in order for you to have uh, redundant data, that is, two equal ray ray integrals at different uh, projection angles, you have to satisfy this condition here, where gamma is the the uh, angle of the ray. Okay. So gamma is the, so here's the, beta is the uh, angle of the source, and then gamma is the angle of the ray in that fan beam for that particular source. So in the case of uh, parallel beam, we just had beta one equals beta two plus 180 degrees. But in this case, we have minus gamma one here and minus gamma two. You'll notice that uh, in this case, gamma gamma one has to equal minus gamma two. And you may remember Professor Zhu covered this in. In lecture, uh, if you then add this, if you substitute in minus gamma one here and add it to the other side, you see that the relationship, uh, you get a relationship beta equals beta two plus 180 degrees plus the fan angle. And so that's that's how far you have to rotate your gantry to get, that is from beta one to beta two, that's how far you have to go to start getting redundant data. That's uh, not to start getting redundant data. That's how far you have to go to cover all the possible uh, projections.
that's you have to rotate from zero to 180 degrees plus twice the fan angle. Where the fan angle is the maximum. The fan angle is the maximum angle that you have to. Uh, the, ma the, the maximum angle of the, of the ray that gets uh, that covers the object. So if you so so in theory we have we have enough data uh, because remember I mentioned to you that in that short scan sinogram we have data from zero to two hundred and ten degrees. So that's so that's zero to one hundred eighty plus thirty degrees, and the fan angle is usually less than thirty degrees. So in theory we have enough data, but if you put it, if you if you uh, if you apply a conventional fan beam technique, fan beam uh, analytical uh, filtered back projection, for the case of a sinogram from zero to two hundred ten degrees, you get uh, you get very obvious artifacts. So it's been shown that uh, in order that you can you can improve this case. One of the one of the reasons you're getting these artifacts is because there is some overlapping data. There there are some rays that have been Measured twice, and there's some rays that have been measured just once in this zero to two hundred ten degrees. So it's been shown that by applying a, a, a weighting that de-emphasizes redundant data, and in this case, these two terms here are less than one, so they de-emphasize redundant data. That's redundant data is, is in this range, 180 degrees minus twice the fan angle, so 180 degrees plus uh, twice the. Actually, this isn't the fan angle. This is a variable. Data. This is the. Uh, sorry, this is gamma. Because remember, the sinogram space is a two-dimensional function. So this is a gamma and beta are your variables. Uh, so this projection, this uh, this weighting here would de-emphasize redundant data, and relative to the data that's been measured once, I had to make th this. I had to make one modification to this weighting uh, for the case of a flat detector, because the sinogram I showed you was for the case of a flat detector. So uh, here's here's the. Uh, Here's the Parker weighting, uh, the weighting I just showed you in the sinogram space. Uh, the black area is where it's, uh, where it's less than one, and the white area is where it's one. And so when you apply this Parker weighting, this is what, this is how it modifies your sinogram. It de-emphasizes, this is where the overlapping data was, where these two uh, dark regions are. And another, another important reason why the Parker weighting works so well is because it's also smooth. Uh, so you see here, this this sinogram smoothly uh, tapers off to zero. And so when I, when I uh, apply, a, a, when I reapply the conventional uh, filtered back projection for the fan beam case to, the, to this sinogram, the sinogram after Parker weighting, I get uh, an image that's, uh, it's, it's a little, there's a little less contrast, but otherwise, it, it, it reconstructs the uh, the Shep Logan phantom, and here here I've had a comparison between the original image. This is a this is a, a vertical slice. The original image and the reconstructed image. You see here that they both they both have a minimum value of zero, but the reconstructed image has a little less. Uh, uh, the, you can see the contrast is less, so it's a little more, a little bit difficult more difficult to see the the image, but it's there. And so I, I, that, that was project four, I think. And so I decided that I wanted to take this technology and apply it to project number six. So I moved on to project number six. And in project number six, we have a case of a sparse sinogram. Um, so what, the reason why I thought that the technology from the short scan would be useful in this case is because in this case we have, we're missing about, uh, we're missing, let me see here, we're missing 59% of the data. 59% of the data that's usually non-zero in a Shep-Logan sinogram. And so I thought if we can compress this, compress this region, if we can compress the sinogram into the short scan region, uh, we can decrease the, the number of percentage of missing data. Uh, so this, I forgot to mention, this is, this is, what, we're, this is what you'd get if you'd, so if you'd apply a fan beam filtered back projection to the sinogram. And, and when I applied my idea of Compressing the sinogram into the short scan region, I was able to decrease the amount of missing data from 59% to 41%. And that's that's nice, but it's still not enough to do a analytical reconstruction. And I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't feel like it was worth showing you the result I got from that. 
Uh, it's it's you can the white eye line is just a little bit a little bit better, but it's very marginal improvement. So then I I, I thought I would uh, I noticed that in the literature some of the the most the most common way to attack this problem is not what I tried to do, which is to, to I was persistent in sticking with analytical reconstruction, but the, in the literature it's more common to uh, to apply reiterative reconstruction techniques to cases where you have sparse data. So I, I noticed that three, well, three re, three iterative reconstruction techniques that I noticed that were very uh, they used uh, commonly in the literature were algebraic reconstruction, ARC, uh, expectation maximization, EM, and total variation TV. Um, as Professor Hugh mentioned, that total variation is the uh, is a summation of the gradient of the image. The gradient of it's a summation over all the pixels in the image. Of the gradient of the image, and the total and you, you, in the total variation technique, you're trying to minimize that quantity, and that works with the Shep Logan phantom because in the Shep Logan phantom, you just have you know you just have an oval with two little ovals inside, so there's very little variation. Uh, there's very if you, if you take the gradient, it's it's mostly the image is mostly zero. There's just a few places where it's non-zero. Uh, if you have a checkerboard, on the other hand, it, total variation wouldn't work because you have so much variation in that. Um, so, in order to apply total variation, I wanted to first uh, apply uh, algebraic reconstruction. And and this here is another version. This is a this is the same equation that Dan wrote up on the board here with y equals a x. Uh, so, so in art, you represent the. This is the forward projection process. F is your this is F is your original image, which you don't know. And P is the measured projection data. Now, you notice that there are, these, there are vector signs on P and F. Uh, basically, F, F is an image, but you have but it's it's resorted, and so is the linear uh, vector. And so then, M is a matrix matrix of images then, because as I mentioned, 